Hmm, lots of cameras to talk about. So here we have the 60 Mark II camera and here is my review of the 60 Mark II. Having used the 60 Mark II for almost as close to since when it was launched. And the price that they're asking for this back then, can you believe it? It was 8,500. Thank God for Sony Alpha series for making Canon wake up and now we have the R7, which is what I'm shooting right now. So we're going to be distributing this review sections into photo and video. So I will show you a couple of samples from the previous projects in which I've shot in. Let's look into the photo world real quick. In photo world, we have access to 6.5 frames per second on this Digic 7 processor. Is it a lot? Yes, actually, it is sufficient enough. Now, don't get me started with like 90D with 11 frames and the R7 with 20 frames, you don't need that much frames per second otherwise to flex on your client saying that you can shoot faster and more frames per second. You don't. You only need access to so many frames per second at sports events, some ribbon cutting event. But chances are a great photographer would have access to only 3 frames per second back in the 1900 days and they would still get pretty great photos. So frames per second should not diminish you from your work, it should entice you to try better and predict the frame before it happens pressing the trigger before seeing the image comes out on your screen so 6.5 frames per second only exists for when you're shooting with the optical viewfinder and here comes the number one problem that i face as a photographer so the first issue is into the optical viewfinder it only has 45 points of autofocus all clumped up together in the middle why is this the case um if you watch jared poland's video they basically take the ADD's sensor and they slap onto a full frame. So they basically nerfed the crap out from this camera. And borderline, I just hate using the optical viewfinder because the fact that it ruins my composition so much. So what I do, I would flip into live view mode by pressing the start stop button. So basically in live view mode, it turns like a video format. You have access to the uh, autofocusing face detect and it goes around the whole frame. I love that feature and I use it almost religiously as opposed to the optical. The only downside to that is that now from 6.5 frames, it drops to 3, 4-ish frames. And to make matters worse, this camera has a pretty poor buffer. I'm not sure if it's the Digic 7 or it's of the fact that I shoot, probably it's the fact of. So I shoot in RAW plus JPEG. Don't do this, right? Don't shoot RAW plus JPEG at the same time because when you take one photo, and you take a couple of photos, you would outrun the buffer very, very quickly and the camera will idle out for two to five seconds with the screen saying, please wait. So that sucks. <laughs> that, that is ultimately a really bad um, thing. Uh, sometimes I want to spray and pray and I forget that I shoot both in RAW plus JPEG. That's the main issue. Now, aside from this, the picture is coming up from the 60 Mark II. Hey, it's good. It's really, really good. I would say, uh, from having owned the 90D and the Canon R7, the photos coming up from the 60 Mark II is superior than any of these high megapixel count APS-Cs. So looking back at what people would say negative about the 60 Mark II's dynamic range. So when you shoot in ISO 100, 200, and 300, and anywhere below ISO 400, you're not getting 11 stops of dynamic range. You're actually getting far less. Let me show you an example. So this, it's a great picture in which I have printed out using the 60 Mark II uh, camera. I've taken this photo. Now, in this photo, if you notice real quick, the shadows are nicely brought up. There isn't a lot of noise in the shadows. However, if you look closely into the highlights, you can see that's... That's motherfucking blown out. <laughs> but for the sake of this camera's dynamic range being so poor, you need to go ISO 400 and above. So crank your shutter speed up, baby. All right, and I think that's pretty much it for photos. One of the biggest downsides from the 6D Mark II is that it's inability to shoot in 4K. So when I say 4K, I mean the camera's capability to shoot high resolution ultra HD image and not just rely on HD. Because truth be told, every single camera's HD is inherently different from other cameras. The HD coming up from the 60 Mark II is a joke. It's close to 720p at best. What it does is that it sharpens all the edges of the faces, leaving out the middle part of the face super blurred out. Thus telling me that this camera does not have enough juice or resolution to push through the image 
and it basically artificially sharpens the image. And the second negative point about the 60 Mark II is into its dynamic range. The dynamic range on the 60 Mark II, it's abysmal, it's terrible. I would highly recommend you to stay clear from this camera if you don't know what you're doing with lighting or proper exposure. This camera forces you to nail your exposure so well that you basically become the best cinematographer ever because there is absolutely no way you can screw up your video. You can't underexpose, you can't overexpose, there's no recovery, especially when you're overexposed. So you really need to nail down on your settings. If not, your image is gonna... And on top of that, I double dare you. I double dare you for all of you who own the 60 Mark II, turn on your video camera mode, switch on video digital IS, go all the way to enhance and watch how poor quality your video looks like. It looks like a CCTV camera, 144p, man. Like, it's so bad. It's a joke at this point. The video capabilities on the 60 Mark II has every single negative aspect. In fact, it doesn't even have an audio jack for you to monitor audio, especially when you're recording interviews. You can't monitor your audio to make sure that there is no aircon sound or buzzing sound coming up from your audio device. There's nothing you can do except to hope and pray that your audio is clean. And on top of that, I'll show you a couple of samples of my videos when I've shot the 60 Mark II on my vacation. And look at how soft and muddy the image looks like. There's nothing nice about this video at all. Full frame, yeah, sure. But what good does it make if the image looks so poor, like it's shot on some vintage camera? All right, so with this in mind, I've covered in both photo and video capabilities from the 60 Mark II. Let's move on to the last category, which is into ergonomics and how well did it age from 2017 all the way to 2023 now? So, ergonomics of this camera is the best. Like, there is nothing in this camera that's cheap. Everything in this camera is spot on in terms of ergonomics and its quality. I really like the rubber grip. I love the buttons, the dials. The shutter is nice and firm. Everything is built very, very nicely. The retractable... I love doing this the retractable door for the battery, the SD, the SD slot flips out. This is great. Now, if you look into the 90D, it does not have a retractable door. It just, there's no, there's nothing. See? So I, I don't really like that door thing, but I really love the 60 Mark II's uh, battery door. It has a spring return. So in terms of ergonomics, this is actually one of the better ones and Canon has made. I've dropped this camera countless of times. It still works. It's a beast. I love this camera so much. And looking into like my more latest camera, like the R7, it's actually inferior in terms of this build quality. You know that? So there is this part of my R7 that actually right here, thumb grip, it, it, it squeaks whenever I press on it. So it leads me to tell that the quality was second in mind when it comes to latest Canon R series cameras. All right, so let's move in into how well did this camera aged in 2023. Not good, <laughs> not good at all. Everything sucks about this camera. In terms of photo, you have lesser dynamic range causing your prints to have a blown out sensor right here. Uh, it shoots at 6.5 with an autofocus all clumped up in the middle, so you can't compose your shot well. And if you switch on to live view, you drop to like three frames per second. And if you shoot raw plus JPEG like me, you would encounter a, like you will run the buffer so fast and you will be left, uh, you know, with a, with a camera that can't do anything for the next two to four seconds. So who is this camera for? Nobody, don't buy this camera. If you really want to buy a full frame entry level camera, there is this new Canon R8 that's going to come out plus the RP. Those are a way better option compared to the 60 Mark II. Now, if you're an old pops that don't want to switch to mirrorless and want to stay in DSLR, yeah, I would say you can go for the 60 Mark II. So it is no surprise to me that if Canon one day decides to pull the plug on the 60 Mark II series because nobody's buying it anymore. I don't think that anybody should buy in the right mind uh, 5,400 for a full frame body that is so outdated from the day it released in 2017. So, after all this run, I hope I've given you enough objective information to basically gather your thoughts and to why you should avoid the 60 Mark II. And if you have the 60 Mark II, you have to pull up with all this crap, you know, low dynamic range, terrible video, terrible buffer, and... Uh, but, 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 but correct me if I'm wrong, right? Like, 
the, the picture that comes out from the 60 Mark II at 26 megapixels, it's great. It's sharp. It's very nice. In fact, better than my 90D and better than my R7's photo. I really still use this for weddings where I don't need high speed shooting and I would prefer a lower dynamic range so I can get that light and airy look that all couples seems to desire for. And the softening of that image in full frame is so good on 26 megapixels. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's good enough for you to crop. Not too much where the person's face becomes like super, super sharp. For wedding shooters, you would appreciate the 60 Mark II. And in my case, I shoot a lot of weddings. This could be a great photo camera, not video. Anybody who uses video for my 60 Mark II on my wedding, you're going to have to pay me instead of me paying you because I know how terrible this video truly is. So with this in mind, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in our comment section below on the 90D, 60 Mark II or the R7. I'll be happy to answer them. If you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe as I'm trying to reach 100 subs so that I can build a nice studio one day. Thank you so much for watching and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you in the next episode. Yes, girl? What do you want?